In this video, we're going to look at how you can use Frame Restorer to remove light flicker. So I've got a couple of examples here. Now, light flicker typically happens because there are lights in the scene that are not in sync with the shutter speed of your camera. And this can be, this can be really difficult to get rid of because it's not like some even uh, luminance change that happens across the frame it is kind of centered around lights and so you can't just use like After Effects as a auto levels type effect which, which can kind of maybe do this kind of stuff but can't really do this kind of stuff because like if we look at this example here you can see that the flickering is all happening up here uh, it, where where these things are being lit and um, not elsewhere. So you know these 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 are really tricky problems to solve. Um, but Frame Restorer can actually help deal with them. So let's um, open up Frame Restorer and uh, we are going to use the reduce functions again. So. The way to do this is uh, we're gonna we need to find the flicker pattern, the repeating pattern of flickers. So we're just gonna add a layer mark on the first frame and take a snapshot, and um, then we're gonna move through the frames until we find one where the lighting levels match the frame that we've um, started from. So. So I moved on to the next frame and I'm just using this compare view snapshot. And if we look up at the top, we can see that the lights are all kind of different levels. So we'll move on again. It's still different. Still different. Still different. Okay, so this one, they all seem to be slightly different, but they're all different in the same way. They're all kind of, um, you know, they're not, it's not an uneven difference. So I'm going to add another layer marker. And so how far apart are these? So one, two, three, four, five. So essentially, in order to fix this, we need to throw away um, like all the frames between um, so it's this pretty severe stuff uh, that you need to do. So this is kind of a you know good example of why flicker is a really difficult problem to solve. So we're going to uh, first use the repeat marker function and hit apply, and then that's just going to repeat this um, because more often than not these flickers will be in a very uniform repeating pattern. Um, so. We're now going to use this reduce to markers and um, we'll see the results that we get. So, oh, I've still had that. Let's uh, delete that and start again. I forgot that I still had these on from the other tutorial. So, uh, we don't want to trim to markers, we don't want to track footage motion. We're just doing a straight reduce in this, this one. So, okay, there we go. So essentially what we're doing is we're throwing away all the frames between the keyframes and reducing it to just these frames. So let's have a look at that and kind of, well, the good thing is that the flicker has now gone from the lights. Okay, so that's good. But obviously you can see that the band, you know, have not been treated so kindly. So this is another of these things where, yes, it will solve one problem, but there's still some work to be done because we're going to have to mask it to an area. And um, so I have one I made earlier here just to speed things up. So what I did here was I actually, um, so I found with this one, what I could do was I used the color range effect to essentially key out the um, 
key out the, the lights. Um, and then I inverted the alpha, so I kept the lights. And um, But there was still, um, like the lead singer was still kind of, still quite noticeable and visible in shot. So I then just put did a quick mask. I used that as a alpha inverted track mat. So essentially, I'm just creating this, which I'm then putting back over the original footage. And um, so I've done this kind of quickly, so it could still do with a little bit more improvement. Like you could do some kind of matte choker on the on that color range to uh, again kind of push it further out from, so it's not picking up kind of these bits and pieces as well but hopefully you get the idea that you know you've taken a shot that is just really horrible in terms of flicker and um, pretty quickly um, sort of fixed that and with a little bit more care and attention you know this shot would be good to go okay so and we have another similar example of this um, so this was a shot that I got, which um, we had a whole bunch of shots from this shoot that were essentially unusable, which, you know, a lot of Frame Restorer is about fixing the unfixable. And um, because what can you do? You've come back from the shoot and you look at your footage and you've got dropped frames or you've got light flicker and, um, Everyone's like, this footage is unusable. What are we going to do? So um, typically what they do is they come to me and I go, oh, OK, I'll fix it. And so this is a bit more subtle, but hopefully you can see the flicker that's happening. And um, I think it's the office lights that were maybe fluorescent lights that are flickering. And um, you can kind of see it around the edges and up here but it's not uniform again so like there's no flicker happening here so again you know we've got this real problem and so we're going to use the same method i'm going to take a snapshot and we're going to go and look in this area and let's move on to a frame on a frame and you can see this light levels are different so we'll move to the next frame I think that's different. Next one. So this one looks the same. Okay, so this one, we're not removing as many frames. So every third frame, we're keeping every... Th one, two, three. We're going to be keeping every third frame. So again, we'll go back to repeat markers and apply. And like you could go through and verify that uh, you know in a few more places that you've you've matched the flicker pattern, but uh, like I said, more often than not, it's it is a, it is a repeating pattern, and it is again in this case. So we will go to reduce to mark frames, apply, and let's look at the results. Now you can see here that uh, again, motion interpolation artifacts. You know, there's no way that you can throw away this many frames and hope that uh, with this kind of crossing overlapping motion that it's going to be able to deal with it. But on the on the plus side, again, the flicker is gone and there's lots of good areas of frame. And it tends to be these areas of frame where nothing much is happening, where the flicker is most noticeable. So I'm going to go back again to one because again this because it's going to need some work and I'll show you how I kind of dealt with this which is so what I actually did was I um where is it so I used roto brush and uh, let's pull it up so I so I used roto brush to go through and isolate these regions and um, regions that we don't want to do this reduction on 
and then I expanded out the um, mat and put a feather on it um, to essentially create this kind of big blobby area that we're going to use as a mat and um, and then I also there was some this thing here was uh, that was getting lots of um, so if, we, if we have a look at the the reduction you can see it's getting quite a bit of um, motion issues here as well so but no noticeable flicker in that area um, really in the original so or less noticeable anyway so I uh, so I essentially used that as a mat to hold in these areas um, it didn't do a good job of the door either you can see again all of these textures are not being dealt with well so that was why I held out those areas as well now this is the this is the result I don't think this is uh, the final result because I would have had to have found some other solution for the door so probably tracked in a still like took a still frame from somewhere here and then did a two-point track on it and replaced that um, but you can see that compared to so if we ignore the door um, because you'll have to find some other way to uh, fix that but you can see that this shot is now so much better than it was um, going from you know essentially unusable um, to you know really pretty decent so uh, again um, one of the ways in which the reduced function of frame restorer can work wonders on uh, seemingly unfixable footage okay so that is the end of this tutorial so thanks for watching